Welcome. My name is Lee. Daniel and Silas have joined me today, and we're going to do a little roundtable discussion on an item I've read about and heard a little bit about here lately, FMEA. Uh, and what I'd like to know, failure mode effects analysis, and how that applies to an engineering company, what it means. Uh, I'm going to let them address it. They're a lot more knowledgeable about this subject. So tell me, what is FMEA? Not FEMA. Stand for? Not FEMA. <laughs> I have to care of myself there because I've said it before. <laughs> what does it mean and how does it apply? You want to take that one to us? Uh, sure. So there's two parts, failure modes and effects analysis. So failure modes, of course, would be any error or problem that could arise, whether that be in uh, a part, uh, mm -hmm. a product, um, a process, a, a way of doing something, or a service that, that you as a company provide. So any error that um, would cause a problem that the customer could notice. The effect analysis part is taking a look at when that failure happens, what is the consequence? Um, and it's really just kind of a formalized way of being able to analyze what could go wrong, what happens if it does go wrong, and really critically prioritizing those things so that as a company you address the most important ones first. Sure. So if you have something like uh, uh, what, what, what is a failure, uh, what constitutes a failure, how is it noticed, what does it even mean, uh, well, you got to think about, well, what's the crit criticality? How likely is the thing to happen, right? I mean, it's uh, one thing to say, well, I have a clothespin and it breaks, or a paperclip and it bends. Well, I'm probably not going to go through the FMEA process for something like that where they can be somewhat robust and it's breaking is not really going to hurt anyone. Right, right. it's going to be very definitely mm -hmm. applied differently in different industries, mm -hmm. right? If you're someone like aerospace or mining mm -hmm. or you know telecommunications, you're going to really want lives to and sure. safety can be on the line. Yeah, th those things mm -hmm. really matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, automobile manufacturers, medical mm -hmm. devices, any of those things would be done a lot more stringently. Mm -hmm. Um, but you could apply the same thing to mm -hmm. industrial automation in order to keep your processes being mm -hmm. smooth and effective and, and, and cost performant for your company. So different industries are going to apply it different ways. Sure. You know, And we'd see that really in the whole reliability engineering realm. How long is this going to last? How can I ensure that I'm not going to have some surprise failure mode, uh, trying to find out what the failure modes could be uh, with an item, and trying to head them off of the pass, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's something that we pay attention to. Yeah, and, and it can come into play in a lot of different places. So one thing, Lee, is like, you know, failure modes analysis, we could do this real early, where we make a decision up, you know, very early in the design process on something to say how much detail do we need to do. It, first off, if the design fails, is it going to, you know, kill someone or is it going to inconvenience someone or is it going to you know, say it's an ATM machine, is it going to give away all of its money? You know, so depending on what it is, you know, I might want Output to say... Output all, not really a good ATM machine. Yeah, mode. so... Yeah. You, Let's you apply wanna... it to a uh, real-world situation, a uh, situation that a lot of our viewers out there might actually come in contact with. Say, for instance, an example you've given me before mm -hmm. of a traffic light. Sure. There's a good one right there where everybody deals with a traffic light. Mm -hmm. You're driving your car, coming down the road, and approaching a traffic light, there's other traffic coming through the intersection... Tell me how this would apply and how it could be very important for your regular public. Well, that has a lot to do with really detection of a failure, right? I know we've, we've all come to a traffic light and you see a flashing yellow or a flashing red. And it's not just about preventing failure because over time things fail, whether you're dealing with traffic lights or manned <coughs> space flight. But failing safe is very important for things that have safety implications, whether it's loss of life or injury. Those things are very important. Uh, so. If you have something that fails safe, you need to be able to detect that failure, have an alternate decision based upon that failure, and then fail safe, whether that's uh, a warning as in coming through the intersection where, okay, caution, uh, maybe, okay, everyone needs to come to a stop first, whatever that is, because the fact of the matter is, we rely on coming to that intersection. It's not, the onus isn't on us to say, oh, well, it's red or it's green, and then making a decision whether or not we need to really you know, believe that, we Listen need to, to say, exactly, exactly, we need to say, this is a matter of public safety, and we need to be able to rely on those traffic signals, so the reliability engineering, the finding what the, you know, the effects analysis is of a failure in that matters greatly, because injury and loss of life are possibilities, 
you know, especially with some high speed intersections. So, uh, you know, uh, knowing what those failure modes could be, coming up with ways to detect them, and then letting it be known when those things actually happen. Now, that's a, a really good one that's very relatable. Now, here in aerospace, we have other things that we interact with when it comes to either determining reliability of devices, maybe Mill Handbook 217? Uh, yeah, Handbook 217 has your reliability. Um, your you electronic know, side, you've got like DO254. Yeah, the, the DO standards are kind of the, the most modern aerospace industry mm -hmm. ones, 254 um, and for hardware and then the related software one as well. And, you know, those have pretty wide ranges mm -hmm. of things that could come into there where you're really analyzing and certifying the hardware, the software, the firmware in the chips, the components, you know, and, and going mm -hmm. down through the whole process. And if it's necessary, I mean, it, it, if you go to that level, it could be pretty expensive. But what's been done there is really saying, first off, what are the costs, what are the consequences of failures? Mm -hmm. And in those cases, it's very critical to take action that those failures mm -hmm. don't occur. If the failure's not that critical, then you could choose to do less analysis of those components. And even within an airplane, certain pieces are, have mm -hmm. more done to them than others because of the fact that at the high level mm -hmm. of the platform, that analysis has been done to say, hey, these flight controls are really important. <laughs> the TV in the back of the seat's less important. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. There's uh, <laughs> things that can happen where... It depends on if you're the one watching that TV. <laughs> um, and, you know, well, and how long the flight is. You exactly, know? exactly. <laughs> so. But either way, it won't kill you. <laughs> And well, there's yeah. the electronic side of that, DO254, mm -hmm. there's a software side, which is DO178, and they're stratified between a doesn't matter, plane's going to land safely, or someone needs to take note of it, or someone needs to take action to land safely, safely or um, the aircraft couldn't be landed safely, depending on what the uh, failure, hap you know, what happens there. Either it's the guy sitting in the seat, you know, watching his uh, uh, new action hero movie that's come out, or... Uh, whether we're dealing with manned sa man space flight, which <laughs> that, you want your stuff to work with manned space flight, so those yeah. uh, no, those no, A no, and B help levels out there if you aren't working e right. exactly, exactly, and so uh, science so <clears> brought up some of the considerations that need to be taken into account as well. How important is it? Because all of these things can come at great cost, depending on how far we take them down the road. And part of what says, well, do we need to do this? Is you know how likely is it to happen? And what's the effect of the failure. So bringing those things into account, having a good analysis, whether it be at a, a module level or a component level or going up to a system or an aircraft level and figuring out what those things are and deciding what is most important, yeah. right? Yeah, really the FMEA is really about, um, I mean, you could do it at a very generic, you know, people sitting around a table and deciding mm -hmm. what could happen and how do we deal with it to a very formal, let's assign, you know, numerical ratings mm -hmm. to the probability of it happening, the consequence, and to um, how easy it is to detect and, and calculate some sort of metric so mm -hmm. that we can then use that as an organization to prioritize what the work is that we do. So it could be, it could be very formal mm -hmm. or it could be very informal um, type of a process. Um, so really, Lee, you asked, you know, how does it apply to an organization? It really applies in terms of making sure that as a company, um, you're focusing your resources in places where it matters. You know, don't spend a lot of resources designing around something that is not likely to happen when there's something that's way more critical that's not being addressed. You know, use your resources in the place where they are. It's really just a tool. I mean, it's going to give you some, some numbers and some metrics that you can use, but you can choose you know, to take that or leave that how you will, but at least you, it's another input into your design process. It's not only for safety purposes and to make sure that lives are taken into account, but it's also part of our certifications and stuff mm -hmm. that we have to acknowledge this stuff and observe it to make sure everything's safe and that the, the equipment coming into us that we're repairing or providing some engineering service to, that it mm -hmm. not only functions in a manner that's supposed to be, but it also keeps people safe out there whether it's sitting on a tarmac or in an aircraft. So it's part of our certifications too, right? Yeah, actually one thing that's really interesting <coughs> is that, you know, if you do an FMEA, part of you looking at what could happen, you look at the root cause of that thing happening. You know, I might have a bunch of different failures that all kind of cascade back to 
you know, a particular component in the design and how it performs, that may mean that I want to take that particular component or that particular attribute and, and turn that into what our AS9100 calls a key performance parameter. If, if it's really critical that this piece has the proper strength or the proper material, then I can make that a KPP within our process and make sure that it's controlled. And that could be one of the actions that we take in addressing those particular things. So it really does dovetail very nicely in with that, the, the other processes that are part of our uh, quality system. Yeah, roping in those things that we have that are part of AS9100 that we are complying with right. already. Yeah. Well, when it comes to putting together the requirements for design, whether it be something that is more of a, a, a consumer or an industrial type need, mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of, you know, bend in one place. Uh, but when it comes to aerospace, public safety, other things like that, there are a lot of considerations that need to be taken into account uh, when it comes to reliability and figuring out, well, how do we how do we get there? This FMEA is one of those tools that we have that allows us to figure out, well, what needs to be done, what can we do about it, how do we encounter it, and that's something that Duotech Services can leverage to the benefit of your project. If you have an opportunity, visit us at duotechservices.com or follow us on Twitter.